you thought? <laughs> well, wow. What did you think of that? You know how to fill a room. <laughs> this is, you know, this is these are these are the people that keep us going. Wow. Yeah. 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 These are our people. It's not tracking it's not a ball. Whoopi Goldberg, this is your first ever convention appearance. What do you think of all this? I'm a Star Trek person, so I, I always thought, you know, I'll get to a convention, I'll get to a convention, and I never got the opportunity because I've been, been working. So, um, but to actually get here is kind of wonderful to see everybody and to see that, you know, that good things do last. Well, let's go back, back to the time. When you first discovered Star Trek, I mean, Star Trek really had a massive, massive impact on you, and that's not an understatement. No, it was a, it was a huge impact because, you know, listen, I'm, I'm a girl of a certain age. And, yeah, you know, Star Trek's 50, I'm 60. And so, yeah, I don't mind it, I'm happy to be here, you know. But, when I was a kid, I loved sci-fi, I loved horror movies, I loved all these things, and you know, there were lots of folks represented on television, you could see black people on television, but you never saw black people in the future. And until Gene Roddenberry put a beautiful black woman on that show, and not just a beautiful black woman, but a beautiful black woman who was the communications officer. She wasn't cleaning houses, she wasn't doing any, no, no, and don't, I say that because one of the shows when I was a kid that was on was called Beulah, okay? There were shows uh, like Amos and Andy, which had us in a very sort of different groove. But to see her in the future in charge of communications and being as hot as a woman could possibly be, <laughs> to where the aliens wanted her. Because <laughs> every now and then you would look and you'd see Spock, he'd be looking at her and you know. You know what he was thinking. I knew what he was thinking. You know, the captain was looking at her. Everybody was looking at her. But I think they were more looking at her because she was integral to their being able to survive wherever they were going. And so that was a huge deal. And once I saw that, I thought, okay, I could do that. I could be that. I could be that person. Now, of course, we know I don't like to fly. <laughs> <laughs> but I did want to be part of that legacy. And so when uh, LeVar Burton let me know that he was uh, joining the cast of Next Generation, I asked if I could be part of it. And he said, I'll ask him. <laughs> and he did. And then I didn't hear from anybody for about six, seven months. And I saw LeVar and I said, did you tell them? He said, yeah, I told them. <laughs> they didn't believe me. <laughs> so I said, can we call somebody? So we called, I think, Rick Berman. And we created a, a, a meeting. And I got there, and Gene Roddenberry was sitting there, which was kind of, yeah, it was really amazing. So he said, um, can I ask you just a, a very upfront question? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, why do you want to be on Star Trek? <laughs> and I said, you don't know? And he said, no. I said, you don't know that we don't exist anywhere in science fiction before you put Lieutenant Uhura out there. And he said, come on. And I said, it's true. <laughs> he said, it's, it's not possible. I said, you'll see. And so we talked some more. And he said, let me think more about this. And about two weeks later, I got a call at my house and it, it was him. And he said, um, Whoopi, you actually are right. And I said, yes, sir, I know. Um, can I 
be on the show now? <laughs> and he said, well, as it turns out, I've created a character for you. I've built you uh, a bar. <laughs> I said, thank you. <laughs> and he named me after a woman whose name was Texas Guinan, who was a restaurateur in New York at the turn of the century, who would greet her, <laughs> greet her patrons each evening with a little gun, <laughs> and she would shoot it up in the air and say, hello, suckers. <laughs> now, Jean made it clear I was not going to get a gun, nor would I be able to say, welcome suckers, but he said, I'm going to make you very, 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 very old and very, 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 very wise. And my thought is that you may, you know, be the great, 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 name some more greats, grandparent of any number of people that you run across uh, in the universe. So I always assumed that Picard was one of my great, 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 great. It's always a great chemistry with you and Patrick, I have to say. Yeah. I mean, even from your first episode, The Child. I mean, watching your scenes with Patrick in some of the finest episodes of Next Gen, there was such a genuine, genuine not just with the rest of the cast of Next Generation, but especially with Patrick, and I wonder if you could like talk about like your, the first time you met him and how your relationship evolved over the time that you really were doing the Star Trek episodes and the features. Well, I, I don't remember when I first met Patrick. Um, I don't know how I met him, but I know that I re-met him when I went to do Next Generation. And he said, welcome, Wolper. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, sup, Pat? <laughs> and it was fine. You know, listen, you know, he, he was one of the people that you really wanted to up your game with. You know, everybody on that show, at least for me, you know, from LeVar to Gates to, to uh, Frakes, they're all fine actors in their own right. And so you wanted, you wanted it to be cohesive. You wanted it to be... You want it to be believable. So everybody actually did the work. And I tried really hard to fit in. Because there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff. They were talking technobabble, and it was like, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> and, you know, trying to, you know, they all have to, you know, they wear those clothes, you know, you got to look good in the thing. You know, that's why I had tents. Because <laughs> I didn't want anything clinging to me. Because everything I am is down on the floor. <laughs> and has been that way for 30 years. <laughs> but I loved my hats. Yeah. Yeah. Did you keep it? Well, I, they have, you know, I'm such a good girl. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Listen, when you're one of a couple, you don't want to be the one that they bust stealing stuff off the side <laughs> and a wardrobe, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> where are you going with me with all that wardrobe? <laughs> this? Oh! <laughs> Did you want me to give it back? <laughs> so I just gave everything back so there was no questions, but the hats are out there. And I don't know if you look at them really closely, they are the ship. They're the front of the ship. I'll be damned. <laughs> there will be many who will be, but not you. <laughs> I mean, you know, I remember when I started, when Next Generation, and what's in its second season, your first episode was The Child. And I remember when I was watching the second season premiere, and I was born and raised in Philadelphia, and I was watching, in the middle of watching the episode, and my mom walked by the TV, and she goes, oh, Whoopi Goldberg is on Star Trek? She sits down, and she starts watching it. So just like Star Trek opened doors for you, you opened doors for people who never would have really given Star Trek a chance, but you gave such credibility and prestige to the show. But you know, 
sure about that. I think people forgot that actors have always found a place on television because if you look at any of the Twilight Zones, you know, there are amazing actors, you know, Agnes Moorhead or uh, William Shatner. I mean, they're just amazing people. Robert Redford, you know, so you, I, it never occurred to me that I wasn't supposed to do television. I heard that later on. People would say, well, why are you doing Star Trek or why are you doing a game show? It's like, because I could. <laughs> because why would you limit yourself as an artist and, and as a performer? And if you like to perform, you want to perform in all kinds of places. And it seemed to make good sense, and Star Trek in particular, because I knew I wasn't going to go into space, but I just wanted to once hear that <laughs> <laughs> and I asked once if they could just have me go from one place to another so I could go through the doors. <laughs> and I asked to be transported once. I don't know if they, I don't know if I, oh no, I think I got, I don't know if I got I you were transported aboard the Enterprise. Enterprise B. Before you became a child. Yes, but was that going through, was that like, Oh, that's right. That's right. There was. That's right. Thank you. Because it took me a minute to remember. Because I know that you know we'd be in the in the uh, what was it called? The, At four. No, no. The um, room. Holiday. Holiday. And I knew I got to places from the holiday. I couldn't remember. You know, feeling that. <laughs> you know. But I, I do remember now. Thank you. Let me ask you, you talk about, you know, wanting to walk, walk through doors and here to whoosh. What was it like when you first walked onto those sets? I just kept laughing. <laughs> <laughs> because I said, I, what really did it is we were in the middle of something and everyone was in their seats and I heard the director say, action. And then this is what I saw. <laughs> and I started laughing. Welcome <laughs> to the Star Trek. But it's it's like everything in our industry. You know, you, you look at a a movie and you see a field of purple flowers and what you don't know is like two minutes after someone says cut. Somebody comes and gets all picks up all the purple flowers and pots and takes them away and turns it into another space. So when you see it, you know, it looks amazing. So I, it never, and this is how dopey I am, it never occurred to me, and maybe this is why I'm the perfect person to watch the stuff I watch. It never occurred to me they were doing this. <laughs> I it was really shit. Well, because I could hear, you know, I could hear, I bought it all. I heard the sounds, I heard, you know, the, the, all of the things getting hit and, and, and dust and smoke. And, and when they started, I was like, okay. I'm never going to watch y'all do this again. Be careful what you wish for. It's, it's nuts, but it's what happens, you know, sometimes if you're a fan, you know, and you get how it's done, your mind goes, who cares, let's watch it anyway. And I think that's what happened to me, is I, I, I accepted the fact that there might have been a difference between what I see on television and what is actually happening. <laughs> uh, and that they're not really in space. <laughs> what? They're not? <laughs> no. No, no. Didn't you see The Matrix? <laughs> Are we in The Matrix? That's what I'm saying. So they're not in space during The Matrix. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, the, um, some of the defining, or I would say, the best episodes of Next Gen feature Guy Miller. Yesterday's Enterprise. Q Who. And wait. In regards to Q Who, I have two words for you. John Delancey. He is as silly as you want him to be. I was very, very serious. 
but you can tell he's, you know, he's silly. <laughs> we all do. So I would just irritate him <laughs> as much as I could. Because <laughs> he's, I have to do this and this and this and this, and I go, okay. And then I give him a totally different look. <laughs> so we had fun. It, you know, again, there was not there was not a bad vibe on that set. It was just good. Everybody was good and it was fun. And you know, the fact that she and Q are connected and you know, equals. You know, and we both could actually crush the universe should we decide to. Yeah. Uh, to talk about the fun. <laughs> Talk about the fun, and over the years at, at conventions and, and definitely in books that I've read about, about all of the shows, one takeaway from all of that was just how close and fun the cast, the crew of Next Generation was. And I would wonder if you could talk a little more about the camaraderie with Jonathan, with Gates, with Marina, and obviously with Patrick and LeVar. I mean, and Will. You know, and Will, of baby course, baby. baby Will, you know, so <laughs> I wanted to really talk about just how, how fun that made the experience for you. Well, you know, they were, the, when I came to Star Trek, it wasn't like I shouldn't be there. It wasn't like, um, here comes one of those actors. It wasn't that at all. It was like, what's up? And I think part of that is because LeVar prepared everything. <laughs> Because I would love to tell you I'm a really conscientious actor. I would love to tell you that I go over stuff time and time and I'm very deep. I'm not. <laughs> when you say action, that's when I work. Until then, I'm, I'm making noise, I'm in the way. And so I had to learn, you know, how not to make too much noise when other people are trying to concentrate. Because I'm bad, I run them up. I want to see everything. I don't want to touch everything. How does this? Oh, I broke it. Uh, There's a lot of that. So I think, I think the Lord prepared everybody for the fact that I'm just, that it's all interesting to me. That it's never because I'm trying to be a bonehead or throw anybody. It's because I really want to know. I stand with a director to understand what he sees in a camera. Because I don't get it. You know, I don't understand you know, angles, and then they've got to put the camera, and I feel like if you did it here, why do I have to do it over here too? <laughs> you know, because that's the way we do it. That's the way it's done, you know, and you have all kinds of stuff that you have to do, so that's why I'm, I, I try never to leave the set, and so everyone was quite prepared for me, and um, we laughed a lot, and they laughed at me a lot because of those, those hats. <laughs> they call me Shovelhead. <laughs> that was my name. You know, Star Trek The Next Generation, I feel like it really hit its stride. I'm sure you all agree too, in the third season. I mean, third season of The Next Generation, it's like, okay, we're down to business. And a large part of that reason is because of one of Star Trek's unsung heroes, which is Michael Piller. He was one of the most gracious, amazing men that I'd ever met. He was just a kind, smart, brilliant person. And if you say, I don't understand this, I don't think I could say this. He'd say, well, let me say it first, see if I can say it. He said, oh, this is a mouthful. And you didn't have to beg. He got it. And you could go to him with anything. And I didn't have to go to him a lot. I would just go to him to bother him. <laughs> but on the, and the times when I couldn't quite get it together, he was my go-to guy. Because he was just a great man. Well, one of the great episodes of Next Gen, I would, I, I personally, it's a personal favorite of mine. I consider it the Citizen Kane of Next Generation episodes, Yesterday's <laughs> Enterprise. Tasha Yar, I mean, she, uh, th that was Ooh, a... You killed that woman. <laughs> <laughs> I kill her. Every time you kill Tasha Yar, she shows up somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Or what, you know, like, listen, you're doing a weekly series, and that episode was cinematic. Yeah. What do you recall about the making of that episode? Just that it was a huge deal. The story felt big. Everything felt big. And it felt a little heavy for me. Because they said, basically, you're the only one who knows something's wrong. You know? And I was like, really? <laughs> a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. I mean, Picard doesn't get nothing. He doesn't see nothing. He didn't make that. I said, no, no. You, you, you're not positive, but you know. You know, you know. And I said, okay. And, you know, when I watch it, I, I just kind of, I kind of grin. Because it's beautifully done. It's, I mean, but I also, I, you know, you're much better versed on when things were. My brain just remembers days that I had great times. Working with the man who played Mark Twain. That was a great one for me. Um, but there, are, there are so many episodes that for me were just like, who thought of this? Who, whose brain came up with this? You know? And then there's the boar. The boar, Maurice Hurley, yeah, sure. I mean, that was like, you know, in the middle of the second season, Q Who airs, and here's this cube, and they're out in the middle of nowhere, and then they're brought back. And when they return in Best of Both Worlds, that was a, that was a, a game changer yeah. for Next Generation to end with Riker's order to fire. I was wondering like, why you were filming those two episodes and the third season beginning of fourth, just if you like, like, all got the scope of how crucial that was in the world of Star Trek. You know what? We were just working. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, I think most actors don't know when they're in the middle of it that it's, it's deep or amazing to people. We don't really know that until years later and somebody says, my God, have you seen this thing? And you watch and you go, oh my God, look at that. You know, but we're in, when we're in it, we're trying to get the lines right, we're trying to hit the blocking, we're just, we're just trying to deliver the product. And you know, you never know how meaningful something is to people. It's like Gene didn't know. You know, for me, you don't know until someone says, hey, this means a lot and here's why. But why do you think, I mean, this is a question that everyone gets asked, everyone who's ever been associated with Star Trek in any way, shape, or form. What does Star Trek mean to you? Why are we all sitting here 50 years after its premiere celebrating something that has not only endured, but evolved? Why? Because the thing that Star Trek never let go of was hope. They, they don't have perspective, but they weren't there at the time. But when the original show was premiering in '66, you had Vietnam, civil rights, the Cold War, yeah. and just like that provided hope then. Just so it, it does now. You got a new show coming on in 2017, and that's that's how how cool is that, by the way? Well, I'm trying to get on it. You know. <laughs> did for me was he wrote a character that can appear anytime, anywhere. <laughs> Just thought I'd mention that and in case anybody sees J.J. Abram. <laughs> hashtag uh, Brian Thor. His Twitter tag is Brian Thor. Hashtag bring back Guinan. <laughs> will go and find a five-year-old guy. That is not what we want. But, I mean, look, Star Trek, Star Trek said, this is a possible future for us. And if we are decent and good people, we have the right to go to other planets and other species and say, we are here and want to talk. That is the future, that is the promise of the future, and that's why people have held on, because we are all aliens.
Christians, whether we come from, from this earth or from another, another country, we have all come from somewhere else trying to meet up and find that thing that says we're all okay. And that's the beauty of, of what Gene did and it's the beauty of what whoever is sitting out there who wrote those letters and said, bring it back. Remember when they took it off? And the letter write campaign, you, whoever you are, I don't know who you are or even if you're here, but without that letter campaign that was written by the fans of this show, hope would have died. So thank you for writing. Start on this side. You have a question. Uh, uh, hi, uh, uh, Miss Goldberg. Just uh, hi, Bobby. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Really? Uh, from Oakley <laughs> Brown, Dolores Van Cartier, you always have such fleshed out characters, and I'm wondering, since this is the first time anyone's ever gotten a chance to ask you, can you tell us a secret about guidance? Something only you know, or something that Roddenberry told you? I did. I told you. Oh, she I said know. she may be the great, 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 hundred greats, grandparent of many of the characters you met on Star Trek. Well, what's your history with Q then? I <laughs> 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 want to the gossip. Q is, Q is from a neighboring area. <laughs> and we are practical. Q is not. Q is not a practical person. My people live in the realities of what needs to be done. He wants to mess with people. We don't have patience for that, which is why she had no patience for him. So that's the thing. And they probably dated two, three millennia. <laughs> they may have a baby, I'm not saying. This is Goldberg. The thing is, uh, wait, wait, let me start it. Just Whoopi. Yeah, just Whoopi. Okay, just no, Whoopi. Not Miss Goldberg, just Whoopi. Just Whoopi. Okay. Just Whoopi. I have a, uh, one thing to tell you. The people who did the campaign were here yesterday, B. Jo Trimmel and, and her husband. And they were here. They started that campaign back there to save Star Trek. I got a chance to talk to them. So I'm sure they welcome your thank you. Okay? All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Rest your heart on that. And on the gentleman's question about Guinan, I'm going to start with this. You have Miss Whoopi, okay? <laughs> hugs and embraces that are heaven sent. I got a chance to express my feelings with you and have an embrace by you and a hug in Altadena, California, when you were filming Kingdom Come. Okay, and you signed the poster for the American Library Association. You put your arm around me. My mother's in cancer, okay? And it was, I said, heaven sent. When you were walking up from that, that house across the street from the library, it was like in slow motion with, with your entourage. It was, I had a friend who was my employee, who was going to take a picture. She was transfixed. She'd take the picture because she saw you and she stopped in her tracks. <laughs> you can do that, Whoopi. Thank you. And because you have that, and I want to tell you, every time on The View, from the beginning, when people come from all the different chairs to hug those people, they come to you and they come home. They come to heaven. And so I want to tell you that you bring that to everything you do in the chocolate voice of yours. And I want to know that you talked about the, the Guinan thing. Was there something in Guinan that is magical, heaven sent, that we don't know about? Because we'll be, you have it, and I, God bless you, I love you. Thank you. And I'm just so happy that you're here. Thank you. And everything you do. by Gene Roddenberry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the secret of God. Thank you, God bless you, sweetheart. It's a love fest. <laughs> Asking the question. 
Hello, this Hello. is more of a personal question. Okay. Uh, I want to take you back maybe 25, 30 years ago when you performed at the Omni in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh-huh. You made a... <laughs> you made, a, you made a, a joke about being in such pain that you wanted to eat the paint off the walls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I was in pain that night? That night. Did I have my period or something? <laughs> Okay, the concierge, right. Martha Ogden, uh, took care of you okay. and, and got you a doctor. Oh, great. And she, just, and she loves you. Oh, you know what? I, you know what? I know exactly what you're talking about. I went from there to Chicago and ended up in the hospital. I absolutely was impenitent because I didn't know what was wrong. And I kept cramping. Yes, I do. Thank you. But but you still performed that night. Yes, yes. Even well, though, so yeah. you're quite a professional. Well, when people pay you, you can't cramp. Kind of <laughs> but in any case, uh, Martha, I'm her mamacita, her stepmother. Oh, great. And she was very excited that I was going to get to see you today right. and that I'm going to get to take a picture with you later this afternoon. Okay. So she sends her best regards. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, I want to take you back a little further than that. <laughs> don't tell me we were married. I don't think I can hear <laughs> Oh my god, okay. I would like you to tell us your favorite and most cherished memories of working with director Steven Spielberg on The Color Purple. Uh, Shouldn't you have one of my husbands? <laughs> um, the great Not too late. <laughs> oh, no, it is. Um, <laughs> The greatest thing about working with Steven Spielberg for me was that he understood how I worked out. I love movies, and so if you make movie references to me in terms of what you want me to do, it's easier for me to understand. So the way I try to explain that to people is he, at one point, wanted me to have sort of a haunted look, but not a frightened look. So I said, mm. And he said, do you remember when Boo Radley, when Scout moves the door and there's Robert Duvall standing there? I said, yes. He said, that's the feel I want. I said, okay, I can do that. So that's, the, that's my deepest and richest with him because it, he's one of the few that understood that that's how I can understand it. I mean, it was at such a time when you were, I mean, it was your, your big screen debut, so. Yeah, you know. 30, Pretty cool. Yeah, for 30, 40 years, does a lot. <laughs> Let's go back over here for a question. Yes, sir. Hi, Whoopi. Hi. Hi. I, I just uh, was curious to know about um, a rumor that I heard that Nichelle Nichols was going to play either Guinan's daughter or Guinan's mother on TNG, and I thought that would have been absolutely wonderful, because I love Uhura, I, thought, I think it's almost as much as you do, but it never happened, and I was just wondering if you had any input on the situation, and why it maybe just not I've never heard that. That would have been brilliant. What's the new show called? <laughs> Star Trek Discovery. Okay. Hashtag. <laughs> Whoopi, before we go to the next question, I would like to say, I, I just want to ask you, you were moved and inspired by Michelle Nichols, and you just saw her just now backstage. Yeah. How, is it, how great was it to see her again? Oh, we see each other quite often, so it's very good. It's always good. She's just, you know, she's a stunning woman. She's stunning and smart and, you know. <laughs> human being and they're rare you know they're really rare so when you find them you, you kind of want to hold on to them right over here hello um in measure of a, of a, of a man uh in that ep ep episode um your scenes were just phenomenal and pivotal can you speak a little bit about that episode and your lines in it 
that's the one where Dictive you fought data. for data's rights? Yes, 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 yes. Um, you know, Star Trek has always prided itself on being ahead of the curve and talking about issues that maybe people weren't giving big voice to. You know, it's, you see the that impact on other shows like Battlestar Galactica. You know, that take issues that are happening and find a way to bring them to the folks who are watching their shows. And so, I believe that that was why this was so important. And, and to be able to get to play just one on one, really, with with Data was kind of fun. Because to get him, to, I, you know, I would try to mess with him. <laughs> because I just wanted to see if, if he, how long it would take him. But he got me. He got me. He pinched me. <laughs> In the middle of a long speech, he pinched me. <laughs> so I never did that again. <laughs> you know, but, you know, these stories, all of these stories, all the things that they did were to just remind people that, you know, here's what's happening today. You see a correlation? Because you don't want to hit people over the head with stuff, but you want to say, hey, does this look a little bit familiar? And clearly it did to a lot of people, you know, because we are now in the midst of meeting AI full on, you know, it's, it's, it's here. So, when do you know that it is a person? When do you know that the AI is, you know, is it because they recognize stuff? Is it because they're cognizant of themselves? Are they self-aware? When do you draw the line? So it's a conversation that we're now just starting to have, I don't know how many years afterwards. So that's as deep as I can get, because that's all I can remember. <laughs> right back here. Um, I'm here from Toronto, Canada, and, um, and I, I'm kind of shaking here, I can't believe I'm talking to you. Um, I just want to thank you, um, I'm a comedian as well, and I want to thank you for being such an incredible influence on, you know, Leslie Jones, as she said on The View a couple of weeks ago, and for people like myself, especially women, to find the courage to not be afraid to speak up and speak our minds and just say whatever is on our minds, I want to thank you so much for that. And I also want to ask, um, who are your influences who have helped you um, grow as just a person in your life? My mom. My mom. My mom and my brother. They just kind of, you know, said, look, you're weird. <laughs> and we know you're weird, and it's okay to be weird. And uh, unless you're not comfortable, uh, as an individual, you know, it's fine to do other stuff that other people are doing, but you don't need to change if you don't want to. You know, you have to be kind and all of that, but you're entitled to feel how you feel, and if you don't mind the fact that people will hate you sometimes because they disagree, you'll be fine. And that's how I was raised and sort of put into the, into the universe and taught to be you know, one who says, yeah, I know you don't like this. I know you're man. All 50 of you are pissed off that I have an opinion you don't agree with. I'm okay with it because it's my opinion. And if I change, I'll let you know. <laughs> you know, because you do. You grow, you evolve, you change, you hear other opinions. But I was raised that it's okay to have an opinion, even if it's, if it's one that you don't like. So that's what I Back here, yes. Whoopi, you've done a lot from comedy to drama, and I was wondering, in addition to Star Trek Discovery or any new Star Trek movies, what would you like to do next in your career? Because you've done so much. Um, I probably, what do I want to do next? I want to do a lot of stuff. I want to do as many things. I want to make a lot of documentaries. I'm going to be directing a film about Emmett Till next year. I'm, um, I'm writing. I'm, you know, I still do The View. I, uh, I want to do everything I can do while I'm alive. That's all, you know. I don't want to get married I mean, I would like to. That's the only thing I don't want to do. 
I ask you a question. I guess we're not married. Okay. Uh, my question for you is: What do you remember? What, what are your? How much did it mean to you in 1991, the night of the Academy Awards, when you won your supporting actress Oscar for Ghost? <laughs> It's a little freaky, uh, because I didn't realize that I'd heard my name. And I remember my daughter going, Mom, 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 Mom. And I went, what? And she said, he's calling you. <laughs> I left, and then so I left. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, I won. <laughs> I got up and I went and got it, and I was thrilled to have it. I, I was very happy to get it, you know. A lot of people, a lot of great actors never got Academy Awards, never got nominated. I, I got nominated twice. So I am, was really grateful. I look at that thing every day and I just chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> and I go on about my business because, you know, our world is, yeah, those are all fine, but what are you doing now? You know, that's what it is. So I'm just trying to find stuff to do that makes uh, a good time and it's fun. But um <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here, Whoopi. Thank you. And my question is on Ghost. Because okay. I love Patrick Swayze. As did I. <laughs> <laughs> but in that movie, you're t you hear him, but you're not really supposed to, he's not there, supposed to really be there. Right. That has to be hard for an actor to act and have all the emotions you had with him technically not there and relaying it to me. So how, it, how was that? I mean, the experience of that. Listen, I knew he was there. <laughs> but I could smell he was there. I knew he was there. So I just talked to him. I knew they were gonna take him out oh, in the movie. So I just talked to him like he was there <laughs> because that's what it was supposed to be. You know, and, and you can, people can say now, pretend like the person isn't there. So now, you're, you're together, you go to lunch, right? You come back from lunch. You didn't smell what they ate. <laughs> the person is there. And you can't get around the fact that they have had Limburger cheese. <laughs> so you just have to act, which is what I did. Oh, you did an awesome job. I love the movie, but I just... No, no, it was groovy. It was a great... It was a great... Gig. Listen, without Patrick, I wouldn't have gotten that gig. Wow. All for you. Well, he did, because he's... He, um... So here's another weird story. Okay. You got a second? I got a... What time did you want? <laughs> so, again, I'm at my house. I'm having lunch with a friend. And she says... Girl, I just went to this audition. Every black woman and their mama was there. <laughs> I said, uh, really? <laughs> what was it for? She said, oh, girl, they're making this movie. They are looking for a black. She said, black women came out the grave <laughs> to audition for this movie. <laughs> really? I said, really? Because, of course, I don't know anything about the movie. I haven't heard about it. Nobody's told me anything. So we have lunch, we have, and, and it's done. And I call my agent, and I go, um, do you know about this movie? That all of He said, oh. I said, what's the matter? He said, yes, I know about it. They don't want you. I was like, OK. Is there a reason? Is it somebody I know? <laughs> I said, no, no. They just think that you're sort of larger than life, that you would snatch people out of the movie. I said, you mean larger than life? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Name an actor. Name an actor for me. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Bigger than that. <laughs> Robin Williams. Willie Roberts. Robin Williams will be. No, no, no. It's, I, have to, I have to tell you. Tom Hanks! Who did The Godfather? Wait, wait. Bob Brando. Okay. Bob Brando. So I said, like, Brando snatches people's minds when you see him. You think for the first four seconds, yeah, that's Marlon Brando. He's in this movie. But then you watch the movie. 
He said, yeah, they don't understand that argument. I was like, oh, okay. So no audition for me. He said, they won't do it. I said, okay, fine. So then I went to Montgomery, Alabama. I was making Long Walk Home with Sissy Spacek. And I get a phone call from my agent who says, um, you remember that movie that they didn't want you for? And I said, yeah. He said, well, they, they, uh, they have a request. I said, what? They said, well, the director and the actor that they've chosen to be in it want to come up and talk to you. I said, why? He said, because the actor feels that if they haven't tried you, there's no reason to dismiss you. Mm -hmm. I said, really? Who, 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 who has that power? He said, well, I'm going to let you see who gets off the plane. <laughs> That's awesome. So I get a call that, that the two gentlemen have arrived to see me. And I walk in and I look and I start laughing. <laughs> oh, did you do this? And Patrick says, yeah, I don't understand. I figured we have to at least audition you before I take the part. And wow. until I know that this isn't going to work with you or you don't want to do it, I, wanted to, I want to audition with you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we just cut up. You know, we, just, we had a great time. We just laughed and talked and did all kinds of stuff. And then they left. And like three days later, my agent called and he was laughing. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> you remember nobody wanted you for this movie? <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, well, Patrick won't sign unless he's sure you want to. <laughs> that is why when you watch that acceptance speech, you hear me thank Patrick. Because without him, I would not have gotten the job. So that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Bravo. Over here. I have a question. I will be. Um, Guinan is my favorite character on uh, Next Generation. I was always looking forward to your next episode. Uh, thank you. Um, my question is, before you got the role of Guinan, um, I know you wanted to be a part of Star Trek. What character did you envision yourself uh, playing? I just thought I'd be some kind of something with a couple of arms. <laughs> you know, just something, just something different. Because <clears throat> I didn't know whether they would want to see me, you know, to see my face. So I just, I would have been happy with anything. I just, I, I just think it's one of the greatest shows. So I just would, would have been happy to play anything. Thank you so much. It's so nice Wait, to have you. Gotta see this. They're gotta dueling. See this. Sit right there. Yeah. <laughs> No, you, wait, but there's another, there's another. Would they go collect all the diamonds? Here.
like shit. <laughs> no questions? Okay. Oh wait, you had a question. <laughs> no, no, I did, I did have a question. Oh, crackers. <laughs> so I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> when I came up here to ask this question. I've been watching you since my mother allowed me to watch Ghosts. Yeah. So <laughs> since she allowed me to watch that movie. And just being a woman of color and being yourself um, is just awesome. And my brothers, they're still clowning me for being here. <laughs> because being a, a black woman from Newark, New Jersey, anybody who knows Newark, New Jersey, wearing a, a Star Trek costume is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, okay? Look at that. So, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you are still doing for our community and all that you will do. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Did you have any input in your lines as kind of, because there's, there's one line Yes. Right. Context. I don't use it as dying. I right. use it as whatever someone wants to do. Right. And so I wanted to know, did you have any input in your lines? You know, they were, I tried to do them as they were written because they were so well written. So there may be bits and pieces of uh, my brain in there, but I don't know about that line. That, that probably came from Michael, because Michael was brilliant that way. So. I don't know, but if you wanted to have come for me, so <laughs> and, and take you more places than a starship. No. Shane Starr, everybody. Let's keep this going. Let's get a question right over here. I just have a comment. Um, as the other people up there and everybody all day has been thanking you, I want to personally thank you. I've followed you since the comedy days up to the color purple. Since you're a little kid, you can say it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for being you, you know, especially you've carved out a niche that only you could have done. And I want to thank you. And I want to say this is the, the, the this is the second time we're actually talking. I'm the one who actually did Alex's theater system at the house. Oh, cool. Yeah, so good talking to you. Oh, you made it? Oh, good. Yeah, I'm the guy. Concerned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex yeah. is my daughter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You got a question over here. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi, Whoopi. Hi. <laughs> I'm not going to believe this. <laughs> uh, my question today was actually, uh, what was your favorite Borg moment or episode on the show? Because your character had a very important connection with the Borg. What was my favorite? I don't know. I would love to make something smart up for you, but I don't know. Because it's, to me, it's just an amazing, I don't know, I always think about what happens when we as human beings lose humanity. <laughs> you know, what does it look like? What, is, what, what do the Borg of 2016 look like? What does it look like? Interesting that lots of people have different answers in their heads. So I guess that the, the real thing is to make sure that you don't lose your humanity and pay attention. Or the board will get you. I have a question. Your career, you have reinvented yourself many times as a comedian, as an actress, as a talk show host, as a producer, writer, filmmaker. What is the best piece of professional advice 
that you can recall getting and do you recall who gave it to you? Um, I'm trying to get over the reinvent. <laughs> I was always those things. That was always what I did. Nobody knew it because <laughs> nobody was looking for me to do those things. But, you know, the best thing anybody ever told me was do what you want to do and make sure it's good. And you're doing it. Well, sometimes, not, it's not all good. Sometimes I, I really missed out. But, you know, what are you going to do? I'm human. <laughs> Most of <laughs> it. Uh, what I ask you also about, uh, a lot of, I had a lot of fun watching the Sister Act movies, both of them. <laughs> Like, there's certain movies that look like they're, they're so much fun that it's infectious. I mean, how much fun did you have making those films? I had a great deal of fun making all of them. Listen, let me just say this. There's only one movie in my entire career that, I, that one, <laughs> that you could maybe say, really? You really did that? And I would have to say, yeah, I really did. But I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> but it involved... I'm, I'm, I keep thinking you're gonna get it, but maybe you don't know about it, and which makes me think maybe I shouldn't tell you. Yeah, you know. See, I know you know. It involves a talking dinosaur, <laughs> and that is the only really questionable movie I think I have. The rest of them, good, bad, or indifferent, they they were all things that I enjoyed, that I wanted to do, that I had a good time with. Some people saw it in the theaters, some they didn't come to until they were on television. You know, you just never know, man. You know, look, I have a career because people might not always like what I do, but they're interested to see me do something different that they don't know that I can do. Because they know like some of it, some of it I don't like so much. Sometimes I like what she has to say, sometimes I wish she'd shut up. I, I get that, you know? I feel the same way. <laughs> About myself, I mean. <laughs> but I'm very happy. Well, on that note, that you are very happy. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen,